Right, welcome to this VFX tutorial. Today we're going to be doing motion tracking and we're going to be using After Effects for that. So this should hopefully be a recap of the tutorial you did. Or if you weren't in the tutorial or you're working from home, consider this a quick walkthrough of how to do uh, 3D motion tracking. Okay, a couple of things before we start. Um, it's very uh, important that the footage that you're going to be using, try and make sure it's as smooth as possible. Um, maybe using a tripod pan or maybe using a track. Um, so the, the shot itself is as smooth as possible. If it's handheld, it can be asking quite a lot of the software to try and track to something that is really, you know, whipping left and right, up and down, and is quite, you know, is quite jarring. Okay, so be quite selective. If you know you're going to be planning for doing 3D motion tracking, um, pick the right stabilization and the right shot type. Um, to get the best possible result okay so welcome to after effects if you've not seen after effects before because this is our first tutorial then this is the interface um try and treat it as similarly to premiere pro as possible in the context of how it works i.e how the shortcuts work um, and how all the effects controls work as well okay so do bear that in mind right i'm going to stop jabbering on and let's get into it okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to press composition and new composition similarly to a new sequence in premiere pro so we'll click that and a window will appear hopefully on the right screen we're just going to call this one camera tracking like so okay and we want to make sure the preset is uh, 1080p hd exactly the same as we'd make a sequence in premiere pro okay and then we've got our duration here i'm happy with it being 30 seconds but obviously you can make it longer or shorter if you so desire okay um let me just open that up that's fine okay and then we can press okay right then we'll get a box appear okay so just to give you an overview we have our timeline at the bottom okay we've got our project window so where we can put our files and our compositions and any sort of editable ingredients that we want to use in our vfx on the left hand side we've obviously got our preview window we only got one because we're only working with one image um, and obviously we've got all our information presets everything we can play with and properties along the right hand side okay so let's get our footage in okay so i'm going to go down to my um folder uh at the bottom i'm going to go to this pc like so i'll go down to the media and film server student resources tutorials editing exercises and motion tracking okay and we've got some nice tracking footage through the corridor just as a great example okay what we can do is we can just drag that into our project window okay and it's sitting there and it's an option that we can use okay so let's just move on and as we've got our clip here all we want to do is drag that into the timeline down at the bottom like so and it will appear in our window fantastic okay now what you'll see is our render bar is this green bar here now the reason it's grayed out and it just isn't there is because we haven't rendered it different uh, slightly different to premiere pro this renders as we play it okay so if you do, do a lot of work and you hit play like i will do here which is space on the keyboard you'll notice it starts to render through as we watch it now because i've done no effects it renders really quickly but if you've done a lot of work to your uh, after effects project you might find that it takes a little longer and when it goes back to the beginning you'll notice that it is nice and smooth okay so let's grab the effect we're doing today which is motion tracking so we're going to go up to our top right, which is effects and presets, and give that a click. Now, because I just tested to see if uh, we could actually do some After Effects on this uh, computer, I've already uh, loaded it up. But we might have something like this. So we've got a lot of different options, okay? Now, I'll be honest with you, I've probably used maybe under 10%, I'd say. Obviously, we want to do stuff for specific reasons, and there's so much opportunity for After Effects um, and some of the stuff you can do, okay? So I'm going to search for what I want to get, and that is a 3D camera tracker, okay? And it will be here like so. And all you want to do is click and drag like so onto our clip and just let go, okay? And you'll get this screen, all right? And what it's already done is it's opened up our effect controls. So you know when you manipulate your properties on Premiere Pro, you know, your, your size, the scale, where you want the frame to be, etc. Well, After Effects obviously has its same effect control panel. So any effects that I've dropped onto my clip, I can go there and change it, okay? Now, while this is analyzing, you'll see up here, it's about a minute remaining. That might be faster or slower based on your computer, which is absolutely fine. We're in no rush, okay? I can just show you where to navigate to these effect controls if you do lose it okay so these two arrows on the right hand top right of this box we can have project which is obviously our original window 
And as you can see now, because I've dragged something onto that stock footage, it's sitting there, okay? But if it's not there, we can click those two drop downs and effect controls, stock footage, motion tracking MP4, and we can see the effect we've dropped onto it and we can manipulate it if we so desire, okay? Very straightforward um, and, 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 and really easy to use, okay? So we'll just wait for that to finish analyzing. Okay, that's just finishing up. You'll get an orange solving camera notification and then hopefully, in a moment's time, we'll see something quite spectacular. Okay, so this is what the software has given us. Okay, so as you can see, there is a variety of crosshairs, stars, whatever you want to call it, around our image. Okay, now just for those who will be doing motion tracking a lot, if for whatever reason you click off it and they disappear, or hypothetically I'm just in the project window and I want to get back to that, as I said, you just go to your um, effect controls and just click once on camera tracker and it will appear, okay? Now, as you just saw, a bunch of targets will appear. Now, what, it, what it's done is it's basically scanned the scene and tried to make it a 3D space, okay? Depending, obviously, how long your scene is, how jarring in terms of movement it is, it might take longer, but it's tried to do its best to kind of detect surfaces, okay? And what we can do is I can drag it around, and as you can see, the target, like so, um, is trying to show the perspective of those crosshairs, okay? Now, if I pop that up here, for example, um, I can see that that's going to be in level with that wall. Or if I want to put some, maybe I want to be really, really adventurous and, you know, replace this uh, poster, I can do it like so. You see that target's kind of in line with the poster's perspective. We've got loads of different options, and all the way down the bottom of the corridor, it knows that's far away, so our crosshair's tiny, okay? A little word of advice, we want to try, if we can, and... Uh, try and get at least three crosshairs on one target and you'll see that like so so these three are a perfect example if i click once whilst the target is there you'll notice it selects the crosshairs or stars that is associated to it okay if you're happy with that one what we can do is we can right click and we've got two options we can create text and we can create a solid okay in this instance we're going to create text and i can just click like so and it's going to create text for me okay what I can then do there, what I what is now happening is that text layer is basically um, living by the rules of where those kind of stars or crosshairs are in that 3D space. Okay, so if I just hit play now, even though the text isn't exactly perfect, um, I can just hit play. It will stutter slightly because I've asked it to do something. It's just rendering it through, as I said before. But as you can see, that text is honoring where I've asked it to hold, okay? And what we can do as well is we can click on our text layer, which is this one here. So we've got a 3D camera tracker, which is basically the 3D space that it's created and the text in it, okay? Now that text is still honoring that 3D space, but if I want to, I can click and hold and I can drag it and pop it here, okay? I can double click on it and you'll notice the character window on the right hand side appears and I can do all the normal stuff I'd do in Word or Premiere Pro to influence our text. So let's say, for example, let's just grab a random font um, let's just grab, what shall we take? I'm just going to close my eyes and pick something. No, I'm not. I'm going to just grab Source Code Pro, just anything. Okay, and let's just make it a bit bold so we can see what we're working with. And let's just change it to Steve in capitals, nice and big. Okay, right, so it doesn't really make a difference. You can do as much as you can. You can move it wherever you want, okay? Um, obviously, we want to click off, off um, the text, so we'll just click down anywhere off the layers so it, it, it disappears and what we can do now is we can hit play again all right and it will just go through like so now you might notice a tiny bit of stutter there that's absolutely fine all we're going to do is we're going to click this one here which is called flame flame frame blending and the only option we've got is our footage okay and it's just going to give that uh text a bit of smoothness okay if we play it again it might stutter because it's going to render itself over through again but if we play it through, let it stutter, let it render it all through. Our second playthrough, when it's all green, should be nice and good. Okay. If we play that through again, that's nice and smooth. It's honoring that side. And as we track through our screen, you know, that could be the title. That could be the um, the signpost for the building. Obviously, you're going to do a lot more than I will in terms of making that text fit its environment. But we, this technique is just putting that text in the environment itself, if that makes sense. 
Right, so say for example you want to add multiple things into a 3D camera tracker, that's absolutely fine, very very easy to do. What we'll do is we'll pop an image in, okay, this can be a terrible example but you'll see how the process works and you can do far better. You can do this with video or an image but we're just going to grab a random image for now. Like I said, we want to go back to our camera tracker but we don't want to reanalyze it all, okay. So we're going to go to our timeline, we're going to click our original footage, we're going to go to effect controls and click once on camera tracker and here returns our crosshairs okay now i want to make sure our selection tool is selected of course ironically and let's just put something on the sidewall okay so let's try and find a target that is as close to that sidewall as possible that's pretty good so if i click that three crosshairs fantastic now to get an image or a video to be motion tracked we right click and we create a solid okay now what they'll do is that'll create a whatever color solid it called solid it desires which is fine we're actually going to replace that okay so we're going to click on our two arrows on the top left just up here and we're going to go to project you'll notice it because it's we've added an ingredient to our our project it's going to make that like so so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and replace footage with file okay now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the stock photos from the student resources that you'd use for like photoshop or something what we can use is we can use Mr. James Franco. Let's just press that on and press import. And because we've replaced it, we've then popped him on the wall. Lovely, straightforward, and easy. Okay, and we can use these tools up here. They can be somewhat clunky if we want. Um, and we can, because it's in 3D space, we have our Z, Y, and X axes. Obviously, we can move it up and down if we want. We can move it out if we really like. It's completely up to us to get that perfect. And if we want to, which might be a little crazy, we can grab our rotation tool and we can just try and rotate that so it's somewhat straight it is very fiddly i know but that looks about right now i know it's not perfect typically we wouldn't have mr franco on our wall but i'm just showing you how the process works and if i then hit play and play through it he looks like that's a lovely poster stuck to the wall like so very easy very straightforward um, and very easy to do that file can be a video if you like it can be an image so if you you want to do a few more things you can do um, so that is pretty much it you know um, very very simple technique very easy to do it's really down to how smooth your footage is um, to, to get the best result um, and it is literally as simple as that okay right the other two uh, VFX uh, tutorials we've done, James has done green screen um, and, and keying, okay? So that's the other video we've got out. And the other one, our third and final one, is rotoscoping, which is done by myself. All of which are available on the TechNet page, so do have a little look at that if you get stuck. All right, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.